Hi, everyone. I just had a single slide on this. Uh, so I'm, I'm Sanjay Sane. I'm part of Dell. My main focus in Dell is about networking and about open networking in particular. So we started with uh, opening up our hardware and uh, being able to install any other networking OS on top of it. So we also have another initiative in another open uh, compute platform, uh, which is our open community, to kind of uh, go to the next level of uh, openness inside a network OS. And uh, what that means is opening up all the layers inside an OS. So as we have seen so far is we have talked about offload uh, as a key word, which is about having a user model in Linux and being able to offload that into the switch. However, most of the networking switches so far have, uh, have done data path forwarding uh, as their sole data path uh, mechanism. There was no user space forwarding at all. So this term offload is slightly uh, kind of uh, non-intuitive from a classical network operating systems perspective because it, that's all it does. And then uh, obviously now in the server plus switch world, what we want to achieve is a common model, a user-centric model, which is about uh, obviously user space applications that Linux provides. And now we also be able to use the, the switching hardware, which is built so far, uh, so far as to do. So we take a slightly different approach and, and came up with an initiative which is, uh, uh, which is called a SAI, Switch Abstraction Interface. Uh, so instead of looking from uh, top to down, which is how a user in the Linux land or any other user space land will try to look at a, uh, a, a forwarding construct and then try to offload it, we kind of went the other way. That there are already networking switches out there. Uh, there are already so many uh, uh, applications, ne networking operating systems out there which try to do stuff. So why not we take a look at the existing SDKs and existing uh, um, switches, existing uh, uh, platforms, and try to build abstraction as to what a switch can do, what a hardware can do. So by the way, this is a uh, collaborative effort. Uh, uh, Microsoft and Dell and Facebook are, the, uh, are uh, along with the Silicon switch vendors, Milanox, uh, 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 Broadcom, and Intel. All of them con contributed towards the original authorship, and now it's a open GitHub. There are a lot of contributions uh, and, and uh, flowing in. So as I said, the approach is slightly different. And now the next step is for us. Uh, I, I think this will be uh, tremendously helpful. Some of the folks have stated, hey, we don't, we don't understand what the hardware is, can do or is capable of doing, right? So this probably serves a good uh, way to kind of show what, uh, what a switch can do. So what we have done is identified individual abstractions uh, in terms of features, not to the, to the level of flow or like a table level details, al although that can also be accomplished in this API, but all those well-known abstractions as well as the flexible abstractions are, are exposed in a common API and, and they, will be supported by, um, they will be supported by all the silicon uh, ASICs out there. Um, so I got a question. So yeah. <clears throat> you are, you're suggesting a wrapper on top of SDKs. I, I wouldn't want to call that as a wrapper, although initially uh, there are going to be SDKs out there and uh, this SAI API will end up calling this SDK, uh, SDKs. But the way we have designed is to try to identify the abstractions and the SAI API will expose those abstractions. Now, whether or not they uh, use the underlying SDK APIs in one-to-one -one or one-to-many fashion, it's uh, TBD. So it's uh, wrapper would be a very loosely uh, kind of, because yeah, the, but, the but you're depending on wrappers. I, do you have an API for Linux on top of this? Uh, I don't. So that's what, so, so, so when I talk to you about this, this is a, like a, I, I'm here to kind of learn and understand what's out there, but also to kind of expose how we came about in kind of designing an API, which may be useful to this community. So that's, this is the first step. But you'll be open so, to do so Linux. Do you want the good news or the bad news? Uh, give me both, yeah. Okay. <laughs> The good news is you've identified exactly what the problem is, is that we have all these SDKs with different interfaces and everyone has to recode all their stuff on top of it to interface with it. The bad news is that you're solving the problem at the wrong level. Uh, uh, you're actually, in your initial phase, encouraging these guys to keep maintaining their SDKs and we don't want to waste any more time and effort in that space anymore. This thing where you're, you're coming up with open APIs that you think uh, uh, appeal to the lowest common denominator, what is exactly needed at each level, that's the kind of discussions we should be having about our kernel interfaces and what we've been discussing in the last couple hours today. So uh, I hope that we can leverage some of the discoveries you make during that process, but uh, 
I think really, 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 really need to get there is to invest this kind of investigate, uh, invest this kind of uh, effort at, at, at the kernel level. So that's just yeah. Excel, my I mean, that's an excellent point, right? This is exactly what I want, came here for to open up ourselves to the bigger and more communities. So the next time I come here, obviously I have something that attaches itself to the kernel. And but, uh, in in a certain way, since you had to take into consideration what all the SDKs provide for you, you kind of are gaining knowledge about what the capability space is. Correct. So, Correct. so it that's, is that's, useful. That's exactly what I'm thinking. It could be useful for this community as we all uh, talk about how the user space models collide or can be combined with the hardware models. And this is a step we already have there out there. So that's the reason uh, for uh, for kind of exposing so, this. Uh, so Sanjay, I want to make sure you understood one thing, right? Yes. There is no user space model. The model is Linux. That so, is the model. Uh, I, I mentioned user space. It's, a yeah, incorrect. So it's the user our, models. Uh, so yes, what am I, it's what? Linux is the model, yeah, and that's yeah. kind of the goal. That's what I opened with. Right. Because the problem here is making APIs consistent is actually not a solution. It's the net model that needs to be something that the other side of the wire can treat as an equivalent piece. And that's, that is the goal of a Linux. Two Linux boxes don't look, operate differently, right? So, so I think we, we went through this earlier on, right? There are different applications. That's, that's what I meant by user models. Uh, but there is a hardware model which is kind of se separated or kind of stranded from the, uh, the different places. Because some examples, even in the Flow API discussion that may come, is many of the different user models uh, may end up using some of the underlying overlapping hardware constructs. Uh, so, 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 so the user models may be restricted to their own use of features like TC or EF tables might be talking only about their own features. OVS, DB, and so on and so forth may be talking about their user models. But when I talk about hardware offloading, they might end up using the same underlying TCAMs or same underlying hash tables and so on and so forth. So that's what I meant by user models versus hardware models as a, as a, as a plugin. What we have started with is, a, is coming up from uh, bottom sub and trying to identify what is that the hardware can expose and our for the next step is to kind of merge these two worlds to defining a um, kind of a, uh, do the offload part correctly. All right, so, so these are the details. As I said, I'm, I'm uh, talking in front of you for the collaborative effort, uh, although Dell is part of that. And uh, these are the details where you can find the existing APIs. Um, uh, there will be some demos uh, in the next uh, OCP meetings and so on and so forth. So feel free to kind of uh, take a look uh, uh, and let's collaborate. So that, that was my pitch. Yeah. I want to add uh, on top of what Sanjay said, so taking aside the level of uh, where should be the interfaces, and of course in this room we can understand who wants to go where, and this is not for the discussion here. I think that this is the first time, at least for the many years that I've been in the networking, that both customers and many big customers and providers sit in the same room and discuss a unified entity that really helps open source. And I think that building an ecosystem and learning where you can enjoy protocols and standards to drive one software solution, and when you, where are the areas where, in a commercial area, you do want to enable a competition or, or secret sauce, I think sitting in the room and understanding and trying to find the best way of solving stuff at the networking layer, layer and and doing some hardware acceleration, we learn a lot from it. And I think that by reviewing the interfaces, and it's the first time that you can see an API, and no matter level currently, that knows that underneath this API there is more than one hardware that probably can support that feature set. Now this, we can leverage from this knowledge, building an interface in the kernel, and try to understand, and it gives a big hint that there is a solution that can be supported in that way. Um, I'm not sure I completely agree. I, I, I would say a NIC API is NetDev. Right? That's, that's your API. There isn't a, a, a DMA engine or a packet API underneath. I think um, trying to make an API that is abstracted and that's hidden under the kernel just becomes a layer that you don't need to maintain. I mean, there is no need to maintain sanctity at that layer unless you're exposing it to user space. And that, I think, is something that scares the crap out of me. I, I, I'm taking aside the user space. I think that right. try, t take the P4 issue. Now, the P4 tries to model something that is not, is based on ideas, right? Because you don't have a true hardware, because you don't see the RTL of all the vendors. I think that if 
all the hardware vendors could have opened uh, whatever they invested, the billions of dollars that they have invested in order to create a silicon, there wouldn't be a need for logical models that describe hardware. You can just go and read the RTL, right? But such doesn't exist. So when you're trying to build something that can be really accelerate it and, and not in a, 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 a small home router, we're talking about commercial data center worthy piece of equipment to try to build that ecosystem, it's, it's really a challenge. And without trying to and still be a, a, in cooperation with the vendors and the customers and addressing those needs. And we really need to take, although, you know, I, and again, leave the software uh, level aside, I think that we need to work with an ecosystem and, and leverage this. How can we take that work into the Linux as well? I just as I said, at the minimum, this there will be uh, uh, API-based uh, platforms that will be coming out. So uh, at a minimum, for this community, it will be uh, it will serve as a it's a good uh, kind of a uh, learning uh, experience as to hey, I don't even know what these SDKs provide. This this is the API from where you will know uh, what they provide. Right. I just think that it's it's purely useful for discovering the scope of the problem, and uh, that. I hope we can apply what, what we learned from it in the kernel, but I don't think this is the long-term thing that we're looking at. Okay. Sounds good. Any other questions? Thanks. So it's a little disappointing that there are nobody asking questions from this side of the room. <laughs> so I have to keep handing the mic over to that side. Come on, this side, what's going on? 